in this video, video number four of how to graph a line, but now we're going to focus on graphing a linear inequality. Now to graph a linear inequality, you need to know how to graph a line first, and that's what the first three videos discussed. But now we have this inequality right here. We have y is greater than one half x minus three. Well, let's go ahead and just graph the line, uh, and notice this does look like something of the form mx plus b, where m is the slope of our line and b is the y-intercept. And you may recall that we did have y equals mx plus b. So we do have y by itself, therefore one-half is our slope and the y-intercept is negative three. So I'm going to put a dot on negative three for our y-intercept right there, and the slope is one-half. That means we can go up one and right two, like this right here, up one and right two, and we can do this a few times. But also remember we can go down one and left two as well, because two negative moves, down and left, two negative moves is still a positive move if you want to think about it like that. Now, here's where we have to be careful with linear inequalities. Since we don't have an equal to, this just says y is greater than. Since we don't have that little line beneath there, we want to use a dashed line for this line right here. If we did have the equal to symbol beneath it, we would make it a solid line. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to put that dashed line through these dots. Put my arrowheads on the end, and now we have to do some shading. Since it says y is greater than, we want to shade above the line. When y is greater than, we want to shade above, and I'm going to explain why right here in a moment. So let's shade everything above this line. All right, perfect. Now, why do we do this? And this is where the understanding comes into play. Let's pick a point that lies in this shaded region. For example, I'm going to pick the point 4, 3, just a random point in the shaded region, 4, 3. The x value is 4, the y value is 3. Well, let's take these numbers and let's plug them into this inequality here and let's see if this is true. It should be true because this dot is in the shaded region. So plugging in four for x and three for y, we have three is greater than one half times our x value of four minus three. Again, this is a random point in our shaded region. So now we have three is greater than half of four is two, two minus three is negative one. Now look at this, is three greater than negative one? Absolutely. That's why this point is in the shaded region. You can pick any point in the shaded region and this inequality will always be true. Now let's pick a point that is not in the shaded region. For example, negative four, negative seven. Negative four, negative seven. This point, totally random, but if we plug this value into x of negative four and plug negative seven into y, this inequality should not be true because it's not in the shaded region. Well, let's check that and see. Our y value, negative seven, is greater than one half times our x value of negative four, and then we're going to subtract three from this. I'm using this inequality up here. So therefore we have negative seven, greater than half of negative four is negative two, minus three more is negative five. Now, is this true or false? Negative seven greater than negative five. That is not true. That's why this point is not in the shaded region. As a matter of fact, you could pick any point in this non-shaded region and it will not satisfy this linear inequality. Now one more thing to comment on as well is the dashed line. The dashed line means if we pick any of these points on this line, such as zero negative three or two negative two or four negative one, 
all of those dots, if we plug those into here, it will actually make our inequality equal. And since we don't have that equal to symbol, we do not want to pick dots on that line to satisfy this inequality. I did mention at the beginning though, if we had an equal to symbol, we would make this line solid, which means those dots would satisfy the inequality. I hope that makes sense. And there you have it, video number four of graphing a line where we are now looking at graphing linear inequalities. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.